Hi everyone, it's June 18, 2017. I want to preface at the outset that this video may be long, so if you don't want to listen to me, you can just go below the video in the description box and you can see all of the links to studies and information regarding ultrasonic noise. The reason why I'm doing this video is I want to get all of the research that I've done, and it's not all, but it does include the most important uh, aspects of the research, so that people have it. And perhaps somebody else will pick up and do a better video. I also just want to say that things here um, have become exceedingly stressful very noisy and I'm going to be posting a video on what has taken place but I can't keep stopping videos and doing them over because of the noise so I apologize my main objective is to get the information out because I came across this Wall Street Journal article last night and it made me sick now when I came across it I was able to access the entire article. Now, when I bookmarked it and clicked on that bookmark link, now I have to subscribe, sign in. If you have access to this article, you can read the entire thing. And <laughs> here is the noise. Uh, feral Cat has decided it's no longer feral and it has come into my apartment. Okay, hang on. All right, let me get back into this. So I can't access the article, amazing, you know, these ultrasonic, this ultrasonic noise, extremely low frequencies. It is in the low frequency range that we have this infrasound and um, in ultrasonic weapons, the extremely low frequencies. Let me just show you. Gwen Towers emit extremely low frequencies. In conversations that I've had, there are people who are still confused between the cell tower and the Gwen Tower. This is a Gwen Tower. You see how the antenna is very high up in the sky. I think it's like 300 feet. You see all of the wires coming down to the ground. Why? Well, Gwen, Ground Wave Emergency Network. Now, this ostensibly is the bandwidth for our first responders to get all the information they need on disasters so that they can come and rescue and protect and save us. Originally this system was I think 52 to 200 antennas all over the country. You have Gwen Towers in your area where you live. We have the, the, the we're littered with cell phone towers. We're littered with Gwen Towers. When you see an array of Gwen Towers, you know that it is being used for weather modification. One Gwen Tower in your area can be used to mind control the people in your area. And I'm going to get into a lot of this. The Gwen system is similar to the Tetris system in the UK. And they found in the UK that, wow, we can use these frequencies to keep everybody docile, submissive, um, and obeying authority. Well, that's why we now have a country littered with these Gwen Towers. They can emit frequencies into the atmosphere, but the wires coming down to the ground, the frequencies are ground-based. These, when you see these, you can think sonic weapons. You can think ultrasonic weapons. For some reason, the Wall Street Journal, whoever this Robert Lee Holtz is, or Holtz, um, it, it's remarkable. It makes me sick. Ordinary people like myself, like you, we can come across all of the information. We can learn that they have been studying these extremely low frequencies, uh, the ultrasonic, 
the infrasonic, they've been, well, based on my research, as early as 1920. But for some reason in 2018, our mainstream media, what, quote unquote, investigative journalists, can't seem to come up with any information. It's a mystery. We don't know. We have to study. I'll show you numerous studies. Here, can what you don't hear hurt you? Researchers are studying whether the largely inaudible interplay of ultrasound beams from sensors and other devices, do they ever mention cell phone towers, Gwen towers, radar, Doppler radar stations? No. So the reason for this article, every time we have an article that comes out and exposes a little bit of the weapons that are being used against us, you will see the next day, boom, a rash of articles that are intended to deceive the public. So this article, it is uh, based on the U.S. diplomatic personnel stations in China and Cuba. And if you didn't know, in Cuba, Havana, last year, I think it was 24, yeah, 24 Americans, um, are diplomats and embassy personnel, and as well as Canadians. They came down with an awful lot of symptoms and brain damage. They were put through extensive medical testing, and I may be wrong on this, but I think the medical testing, it was performed by... Um, the scientists at the University of Pennsylvania, I might be wrong on that, but what did they find? They found brain damage, hearing loss, an awful lot of the symptoms that are caused by these sonic weapons, extremely low frequencies. And then you get articles like this that dispute the findings. They actually quote this biomedical engineering professor at Columbia University. She was not involved in the investigation. It wasn't just uh, medical testing, but the FBI, our intelligence agencies were on it to find out if the Cuban government was using ultrasonic weapons against the American embassy personnel. Well, I, you know, I always go first to the United States, but here mainstream media. They're giving you an expert. And this expert says, well, I would be very surprised. Ultrasound in the brain, it's usually frequently used in modern medicine. We never see white matter track problems. Why are they just focusing on the white matter track problems when the embassy personnel, all of them, experienced a range of symptoms, well, they're just going to focus on that one thing because they can get that expert to say, ultrasound, it's used in modern medicine. What are you talking about? It's good. Well, ultrasound can be used for good. You can get beneficial health um, results from the use of ultrasound. But are you going to tell me that this biomedical engineer does not know that ultrasound, there are different frequencies, there's different power wattages, power densities. It can be used for good. It can be used to destroy. Health uh, buildings create earthquakes. Yeah, really. We use it in modern medicine, so these sonic weapons certainly were not used on, on these American embassy personnel people. No. Sonic weapon attacks on U.S. Embassy, it don't add up, guys. It just don't add up. This is Scientific American. It just doesn't add up. Add up. Of course, it's bizarre theories. Oh, God. The U.S. is still clueless about the creepy sonic attacks in China and Cuba. China. So now we have American Americans in China coming down with similar symptoms. So it's a mystery in Cuba. It's a mystery in China. It can't be sonic weapons because we use ultrasound 
to heal people. Well, fortunately, Vox, one of the theories, they did say it, a sonic weapon. Look, you know, it's fascinating because mainstream media, it, it's like all over the place. You find one article like this, this crap article, the Wall Street Journal, these experts, we don't know what it is. We, we've got to study ultrasound. Um, and then back in 2017, what are sound weapons? Attacks on Americans in Cuba are calling attention to how inaudible sound waves can alter moods and perceptions and health. And here, in this article, health effects of exposure to inaudible sonic waves are also real in 2001. After residents of what is it, Co Como, Indiana, began reporting symptoms, including annoyance, sleep disturbance, headaches, and nausea. The U.S. National Institute of Health investigated the issue. The result was a dossier on the toxicology of infrasound acoustic energy with wavelengths of 17 meters or more. More, wow, these wavelengths can, they can really extend like 300 miles. And, well, these Gwen Towers, they can, the extremely low frequencies are directional. So they can have extremely low frequencies shooting off to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north, or all of the above, wherever they want to target. And a range of 300 miles, that can affect an awful lot of people. And we're talking an entire radius of 300 miles. So, uh, yeah, the U.S. National Institute of Health. Well, there, Wall Street Journal, whoever the hell this author is, why don't you look into the National Institute of Health's study, their dossier on infrasound. The agency could not pin down the cause of the Indiana resident symptoms as infrasound, but the report did confirm that infrasound can cause fatigue, apathy, hearing loss, which a lot of the American embassy personnel in Cuba experienced. I haven't been reading much of what's happening with Americans in China. Confusion, disorientation, many of the symptoms were similar. Uh, in one study cited therein, volunteers exposed to industrial infrasound for just 15 minutes reported fatigue, depression, pressure in the ears, loss of concentration, drowsiness, vibration of internal organs. And many people that I know who experience, they feel like the ground is vibrating there's an extremely low, uh, there's a Gwen Tower, no doubt, close to where you live, and it is emitting these frequencies that vibrate the ground. So, excellent explanation of how extremely low frequency Gwen Towers and HARP connect and affect the Earth, weather, human health, a lot of information about the Gwen system, tower masks as high as 300 feet, copper wires, in spoke-like fashion, fan out from the base of the system underground, interacting with the Earth uh, like a shell conductor, radiating radio wave energy for very long distances through the ground. But it can also shoot up frequencies into the atmosphere. Now, I have shown you many pictures or many videos you know, the ultra-low frequencies right here. Uh, Canada, you are being hit all over. All over. It's really, uh, how are you guys doing? Quebec, Montreal, um, Marquette, uh, but also Western Canada. Ultra-low frequencies right here. The Doppler radar stations, they can... They can emit very powerful high frequencies to heat up an area, to heat the ionosphere. And this is the signature. These circles 
that are um, perfect, but these lines right here jutting out, every time I go to these sites, if you've got precipitation going in these areas, you've got these extremely low frequencies being emitted and I considering that an awful lot of Canadians have kind of turned into our Americans here, the liberal progressive crazies, I have to wonder if all of these extremely low frequencies, which they can use for mind control, are emitted these frequencies, these uh, Gwen Towers and the extremely low frequencies being emitted for that purpose. And I'm going to get into an awful lot of studies that show that, yeah, we are being bombarded. And last night I felt like hell. Um, it's not on this video, so let me go to my documents and last night uh, I I was so well I'm not even going to bother to get into my symptoms but when I'm feeling like hell then I just go when I'm feeling unusually or unusual symptoms the onset is rather fast kind of immediate that's when I know that I may very well have that friggin transmitter going on right here in Anderson, South Carolina and sure enough it is so this uh, these extremely low frequencies shoot off from this area it's like every single night I go and I see oh shit all right, well, they can create sleep disturbance. Um, my sleep is, <laughs> well, a lot of you are experiencing that. Um, but I live right here, Anderson. Yeah, it's these extremely low frequencies, especially on the, well, eastern half of the country now. I'm seeing them on a regular basis. These are the extremely low frequencies shooting off in uh, Charleston, <clears throat> Carolina, South Carolina. Okay, I have posted many videos on that. Um, so you're bathed in a magnetic field, a dangerous magnetic field. How, what, what can Gwen transmitters be used for? controlling the weather, mind control, behavior and mood control, sending synthetic telepathy as infrasound to victims with the U.S. government, mind control, implants, and you know what? This guy, Robert Lee Hotz, you better look into all of what I link to below because there's a tremendous amount of information. The references in the articles alone the names, the studies, easy to access. Why is it that you guys can never friggin' access anything? Uh, 7.83 hertz can make a person feel good. It can produce an altered state. 10.80 hertz causes riotous behavior. 6.6 .6 hertz causes depression. Extremely low frequency waves changes RNA, DNA, breaks hydrogen bonds <laughs> and then you come across so many studies that prove extremely low frequency fields the chronic exposure which we are now chronically exposed to can induce depression uh, microwave frequencies which it, there's a range so you can go from high to low on that um, within the microwave range and what do we have a study here high frequency electromagnetic fields of digital mobile radio telephones of sleep in healthy humans besides a hypnotic effect with shortening of sleep onset latency 
REM, rapid eye movement, that stage of sleep that puts you into a deep healing period of sleep, that stage crucial for your body to heal and get rejuvenated for the next day. Why are people feeling like hell when they wake up all the time? Because these microwaves, whether it's just the microwaves that they are using so that you can access your phone wirelessly, but they can also, and I will show you, they can, through your phones, hit you with extremely low frequencies. But whatever range of microwave, the Wi-Fi in your home, the smart meters that are pulsing frequencies into your home, the cell towers close to where you live, the Gwen towers close to where you live, all the gadgets, it's annihilated the REM stage of sleep. It suppresses REM. Ultrasound or infrasound weapons. Wow. The Wall Street Journal investigative journalists couldn't come up with anything, really. The experts that he uses to quote and to make his article look like he did some work. And these experts, well, we don't have enough information. Infrasound directly affects the central nervous system, can, can cause disorientation, anxiety, panic, bowel spasms, nausea, vomiting, eventually unconsciousness. It can instill religious feelings, cause sensations of extreme sorrow, coldness, anxiety, shivers down the spine. The seven hertz, the most dangerous frequency, it affects the alpha rhythm in your brain, your brain's rhythms. 1.10 hertz, intellectual activity is first inhibited, blocked, and then destroyed, causes neurological interference. 43 to 73 hertz, lack of visual acuity, IQ scores fall to 77% of normal, distortion of spatial orientation, poor muscular coordination, loss of equilibrium, equilibrium slurred speech, and blackout. 50 to 100 hertz, intolerable sensations in the chest and the thoracic, thoracic, thoracic oh, region can be produced even with the ears protected. Other physiological changes that can occur include chest, all vibration, all vibration and some respiratory rhythm changes in human subjects. Um, can cause nausea, giddiness, resp uh, respiration related effects. 100 hertz, a person experiences irrit irritation, mild nausea, giddiness, skin flushing, and bun body tingling. And boy, they can actually make it difficult for you to speak and sound articulate. And guess what? I was diagnosed with vertigo. I'm now experiencing anxiety. The, the extreme fatigue is just, well, that's, that's just what I am. Um, many people have told me that they have experienced pressure in their throat. All right. Here is an article for that Wall Street Journal investigative journalist. This was in 2004, Electromagnetic and Informational Weapons, the Remote Manipulation of the Human Brain. And yeah, they get into the use of sound, a device transmitting a beam of sound waves, which can be heard only by persons who, whom, at whom the beam of sound waves is targeted. We want to talk targeted individuals who are hearing voices, absolutely real, and unfortunately, that they are so judged as being crazy. They're not crazy at all. They are using this technology to target individuals and target groups. Um, so the beam is formed by a combination of sound and ultrasound waves, which cause the targeted person to hear the sound inside his head. 
It's a uh, procedure which could affect the mental balance of the targeted individual as well as convince him that he is, so to speak, mentally ill. Goes into an awful lot of extremely low frequencies and once again, a whole lot in this article that you can use to do further research. Yeah, that's how I guess journalists um, are supposed to be researching information. You know, you come across an article and if the article gives you an awful lot of references to studies and people who have actually uh, conducted the studies, well, you that's your jumping point to do further research. Do we have to teach investigative journalists how to do their job today? I guess so. I guess so. Um, an awful lot about these extremely low frequencies. Uh, here, the Russian state Duma, um, they wanted to ban these weapons. The Russians were far ahead of the Americans for many decades. HARP actually was the great equalizer. But in the 70s um, and 80s, I think maybe even in the early 90s, there were discussions of an international ban on the use of these weapons. But who was the country who refused? Can you guess? The United States. The European Parliament issued um, a statement saying these devices include weapons using directed energy beams, radio frequency, laser, and acoustic infrasound, sound waves, to incapacitate human targets. And they wanted that system shut down because it can manipulate human behavior and interact with the human nervous system. The Russian state Duma, uh, they had put in resolution to a federal law on these weapons. Um, and they said within the territory of the Russian Federation is uh, it's prohibited to use these weapons. The effects of the operation of which are based on the use of electromagnetic light, thermal, infrasonic, or ultrasonic radiations. Now, do you really think that Russia <laughs> was going to ban the use of these weapons? Well, they certainly were not going to if the United States refused to ban this technology. The European Parliament called for an uh, international convention for a global ban on all research and development because they knew how extraordinarily dangerous were these weapons. Chemical, electrical, sound, vibration. The code of the brain. Here, a book. And it is provided to you for free. And you can read the contents of each chapter. And the introduction, the book, is a history and known facts of electromagnetic and neurological technology within the framework of classified non-consensual government experimentation. It presents as a list of footnotes. Hey, investigative journalists, you guys in the mainstream, check out the footnotes. Check out the end notes of articles and books you might come across. All of those studies that have been conducted, which I'm going to point to in one moment. Um, it's, I, uh, okay. I want to make note of the author of this page, this article, Ryan Littlefield, and I want to say thank you for all of the information that you have provided on these infrasonic frequencies. But I'm just going to read from Table 1. Applications, infrasound, studies that found infrasound. It may affect uh, vertigo or it may result in vertigo, imbalance, um, 
resonances in the inner organs affect the heart. It can resonate with the heart and it can result in death. British use in Northern Ireland was for riot control. Infrasound from nonlinear superposition of two ultrasound beams. My, my eyesight is really getting pretty bad. Um, so really what I should be doing, Carol, is oh, make it a little bit, ah, okay. So it can result in incapacitation, disorientation, nausea, vomiting, bowel spasms. Um, and it was used for crowd and riot control, psychological operations, and these are the studies in Great Britain and the application, the use of these uh, sonic weapons in Great, Back, um, Great Britain. So here, uncontrollable defecation. It can cause disturbances in organs, visual blurring, temporary discomfort to death. Just trying to find the, uh, if there's any other. It can cause localized earthquakes, and we're seeing an awful lot of that. Um, It can affect your intestines. Okay. Um, a lot of very, very, very good information. Physical and psychological effects. Sonic warfare. That's what we are dealing with, guys. This is what we are living. And the targeted individuals, deliberately targeted, their, their life becomes a nightmare. And they suffer their life. For those of us who are electroly, electromagnetically sensitive, our life becomes a nightmare. And more and more people are getting affected. There are emotional changes, psychological changes, physical changes, mental consciousness changes. They can alter the mental states of anyone they want. This is also a very good article with an awful lot here to take and jump off to do further research sonic weapons exist spanning the infrasonic infrasonic ultrasonic and audible ranges these are weapons sound weapons sound is energy they produce psychological and physical effects they can produce painful audible sound into an individual's ear how many of you have had that painful feeling like you're being stabbed inside your ear with a needle and then that high-pitched tone. Infrasonic generators, Gwen Towers, can cause negative emotions such as fear, anxiety, depression, as well as biological symptoms like nausea, vomiting, uh, burns, death. Infrasound is usually not heard. Ultrasound begins in the very low frequency range just above human hearing. So all of the chemical reactions in the cells of living organisms, every cell in your body is operating on electromagnetic oscillations, pulsations, vibrations. They have their own frequencies, their vibrational frequencies, everything in your body. We are electromagnetic beings. So when you have these frequencies externally uh, manifesting they're affecting every cell in your body they resonate 
the frequencies emitted from cell phone towers, from your cell phones, from every gadget, from smart meters, from your uh, Gwen towers, they resonate with the frequencies within you. That resonance can actually alter an individual's emotional state, mental state, change their behavior, change their opinions, their thoughts, and the individual wouldn't even know. So, uh, 1973, the Squawk Box, used by the British Army in Northern Ireland. It was a directional weapon that could target specific individuals, producing audible sound at about 16 um, gigahertz, which turned into infrasound at 2 hertz when it coupled with the ears. In the early 1990s, Russia had developed a 10 hertz, very low frequency modulator capable of targeting individuals over hundreds of meters, meters causing pain, nausea, and vomiting. As far back as the 19, as far back as 1997, the U.S. Department of Defense had an interest in generating those or creating those generators, and they did it, and they're using them. So these devices target the brain. Uh, they transmit directed energy using an exact frequency of modulation with, and it will trigger a precise chemical reaction in the brain which in turn will produce a specific emotion in the targeted individual. These frequencies travel great distances, easily pass through most buildings and vehicles, and causes an awful lot of biological symptoms. Uh, fatigue, pressure in the ears, visual blurring, drowsiness, imbalance, disorientation, vibration of internal organs, severe intestinal pain, nausea, and vomiting. High power levels can liquefy bowels, resonate the internal organs, cause death. You can feel the pressure in the chest, choking, uh, irregular breathing patterns, respiratory incapacitation. The high power, low frequency sound can cause fatigue, blurred vision, bowel spasms, pain, or damage to internal organs, feelings of fullness in the chest caf cavity, chest wall vibration, difficulty breathing, difficulty swallowing, choking, respiratory impairment, the psychological effects, loss of concentration, disgust, apathy, sadness, depression, fear, anxiety, panic attacks, and well, investigative journalists, mainstream media, come on, hey, John Alexander. He wrote an article in 1980, The New Mental Battlefield, showing that these weapons, they could induce depression or irritability in a target population. There is a report called Acoustic Weapons Perspective Assessment, and it's in the Science and Global Security Journal. Here, the volume, number, the year. Infrasound can produce localized earthquakes. Animals can hear in ultrasound, dogs, cats, dolphins, bats. But because we don't hear it, it does not mean that these frequencies are not being emitted, and it does not mean that these frequencies are not actually controlling you. You can experience tickling in the mouth, nose area, discomfort, heating of the skin, Nausea, abdominal pains, vomiting, high decimals can cause burns, heating of the body to lethal temperatures. Your bones can resonate. Your bones can literally explode. When aimed at the head, the resonance, your skull bones can make it sound like you're hearing voices. All right, you know what? I'm going to do this in another video because this is going on and on. I want to put out this information because it is extremely important. And you know what? Why don't you send the links to this guy, Robert Lee Holtz? These mainstream media journalists are such a disgusting, immoral disgrace. Propagandists paid to be propagandists.
can't ever find information that is readily accessible right here on the internet. In fact, before I get into some of these documents, let me just show you. Oh, wow. Biological effects of electromagnetic radiation, radio waves, and microwaves, electromagnetic weapons. Well, let's just check it out. Oh, wow. Huh. The study of U.S. intelligence community human rights violations with the use of electromagnetic weapons. This biological effects, wow, it was a defense intelligence agency that did um, a study on radio, uh, sorry, funded. Uh, our army, our government has funded numerous studies on the effects of microwaves, radio waves, extremely low frequencies, um, ultrasound, <laughs> oh, yeah, prepared by the U.S. Army Medical Intelligence, 1974, 1974. An overview of radio frequency, microwave radiation. Now, radio frequency, think Doppler radar, think Gwen Towers, think cell phone towers, think cell phones. It is causing an awful lot of damage to our, our DNA. It breaks our DNA. Um, amazing that nobody even looks into these mainstream media journalists. They don't even look into Ross Addy's work, who was funded by our government to do an awful lot of experimentation on these what, what these frequencies can do. And they don't even look into this. Electromagnetic fields, the modulation of brain tissue functions, a possible paradigm shift in biology, remote behavioral influence technology evidence, remote neural monitoring, and this was evidence of the use of these weapons, the sonic weapons, evidence to be pr produced in a lawsuit in Washington, D.C. And the use of these weapons on individuals and the domestic intelligence agencies involved in using these weapons. So, you know, it's um, what can you say? Targeting the human with directed energy weapons. Directed energy weapons they usually are using, they can use just the microwaves that are coming from cell phone towers. But from every uh, cell phone tower, they can flip a switch and you can get those extremely low frequencies. They can flip a switch and you're getting extremely low frequencies carried through your phone. So the directed energy weapons very often are those extremely low frequencies. Here, the Naval Medical Research Institute. You want to talk effects? You want to talk effects? Well, you can take a look at this archive. Unbelievable. So numerous are the effects that, well, it's why this article is very, very long, or this document. Here are all the effects, and I'm not going to read it. The heating of organs, the whole body effects, the skin, the bone marrow, the bones, the brain, the sinuses, um, <laughs> changes in the physiological function, um, alterations in blood vessels, liver enlargement, alter, altered sensitivity to drug stimuli. Um, that's interesting. Think about these frequencies and all the people on drugs. Decreased fertility, sterility, altered men menstrual activity, fetal development, lactation, biocurrents of the cerebral cortex, changes in the eyes, cataracts or 
a common result of all of these frequencies. Lungs, liver, gut, brain, dehydration, death. It alteration in sensitivity to light, sound, olfactory stimuli, EEG changes, headaches, insomnia, restlessness, uh, cranial nerve disorders, condition reflex disorders, seizures, convulsions. Uh, that's the central nervous system. And I'm not reading all of everything, but autonomic nervous system effects, fatigue, alterations in the synapses of the vagus nerve, parasympathetic nervous system changes, peripheral nervous system effects, effects of the loco locomotor nerves, depression, impotence, anxiety, lack of concentration, hypochondria, dizziness, hallucinations, sleeplessness, insomnia, increased irritability, dis decreased appetite, loss of memory, scalp sensations, increased fatigability, chest pain, tremor of the hands, behavioral changes. Uh, they can produce reflexive, operate avoidance and discriminatory behavior. Um, they can produce all of those behaviors in individuals, humans, blood disorders, bone marrow disorders, allergies, vascular disorders, changes in activity of your um, all of these biochemical changes, protein denaturation. They can inactivate or activate viruses, fungus, toxins. All right. Gastro intestinal disorders, metabolic disorders, endocrine gland changes, histological changes, genetic and chromosomal changes, miscellaneous effects, sparking between dental fillings, a peculiar metallic taste in mouth, changes in vision, treatment for syphilis, skin diseases, loss of hair, brittleness of hair, sensations of buzzing, vibrations, pulsations, tickling about the head and ears, copious purse, purse, I can't say that, wow, I've said that all my life, perspiration, hmm, oh, well, that was a glitch, uh, salvation, pertusion of tongue, changes in pacemakers, Changes in your circadian rhythm. Yes, that rhythm that jives with the Earth's rhythm, the natural rhythms. It's all out of whack now. All right. Yeah, I'm going to be doing another video highlighting some of the other studies. I am so sick. I'm disgusted by these disgusting mainstream media reporters. And radar, we've got an awful lot of radar shooting off now. Microwave radiation. U.S. Army Ordnance Missile Command. the effects of radar on the human body. All right, well, that is one of the things that I will be getting into. But I just want to tell you that we don't talk about the effects of radar, right? Well, increasing use of radar and other microwave generating equipment by the military services and ever increasing power of such equipment has made evident the need for a single source of information on the effects of radio frequency radiation on the human body. Our U.S. Army knows the effect of the Doppler radar, the high frequencies, the very low frequencies, everything. And we are being killed off by the use of these weapons. 
everything will be linked to below.